what is your typical like inpatient day look like, or your surgery day look like, you know, when you're going to the hot, I guess a non outpatient clinic day. I, um, and I guess, do you run like a primary service or are you more of a consult service or maybe a mix of both? So basically uh, I, I have my weekly schedule divided into the clinic days and the operative days. So Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, I tend to operate. I usually do anywhere between three to five cases per day, depending on the complexity of the case. Some of the more complex cases take more time, obviously. So, you know, uh, those days there are fewer cases. <clears throat> then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm in the clinic. So I see outpatients, new patients. These are patients that are referred to our clinic through uh, the different specialties, be it the primary care doctors or whoever it is. And uh, that's also when I uh, see my patients and interact with them after their surgery. So that's kind of a, uh, a rewarding experience to see how your patients have fared. So they come back to the clinic and give us uh, a report card. And uh, intermix with this um, schedule is the uh, trauma coverage. So in the background of all this happening, there's also a trauma call coverage. And so I, I take a fair number of calls. And uh, that means that I'm responsible for taking care of any of the emergent patients that come through any of the uh, ProMedica urgent cares or ERs. And uh, ProMedica Toledo Hospital being the main hub, all these patients that go to the satellite campuses tend to triage, or excuse me, they get funneled into the main campus. And so, uh, you know, there are days when I could be rounding on the inpatient census, seeing patients in the hospital, but then triage patients from one of the ancillary hospitals and, uh, uh, you know, provide care that way. And the same goes uh, when I'm in the patient and the, uh, in the clinic seeing patients. So, uh, you know, it's a, sometimes it could be a crazy uh, world. You have to multitask. You have to be able to compartmentalize and go from a patient who may be stable and there for a post-operative visit to take a call from the operator about a patient who has had a stroke, who's being transferred via flight uh, to then talk to a primary care physician who wants to send you an urgent consult and, you know, the cycle continues. I think, you know, that's what <clears throat> must make neurosurgery so exciting is the, all the different, um, variety of, of patient types. And, and I guess the variety of urgency, like you said, whether it's, you know, a stable post-op or, you know, a new stroke. And I, I think it's important to point out that your hospital is, is a tertiary, like you said, tertiary referral center. And then it's, it's a level one trauma center as well. So you probably see a number of different, you know, both high and lo low impact trauma as well. Is that right? Yeah. So, you know, given that it's a level one trauma center in this region, there's a lot of patients with various pathologies um, who get transferred over here. And so one of the advantages of being a trauma surgeon, uh, a neurosurgeon uh, taking trauma call is that you have to be prepared uh, anytime during a 24 hour period to take care of any pathology that comes in, provided that you're comfortable and you have the skills to take care of that. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, very, uh, exciting. It's, uh, you know, it's an adrenaline rush, uh, but at the same time, it could be kind of disruptive, right? Because it may disrupt your, your, your lifestyle, you know, it may interfere with raising a kid. You may not be able to go and walk your dog when the dog is you walking, uh, it, uh, it, it you know, it affects your uh, social network. So, I think one of the, the greatest skills that a neurosurgeon and, and really any surgeon uh, who works as a, a, at a trauma center um, uh, must have is the ability to uh, juggle all these different tasks, right? And sort of right. maintain some level of sanity. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, I think that's the biggest challenge, but, you know, I enjoy it and that's why I'm here and that's why I, I love to take call. Um, I always tell the uh, younger residents or, or the junior attendings that taking call is, is not only just a great responsibility, uh, but it's also great on an individual basis because uh, it, it forces me to, you know, maintain a broad skill set, right? I got to be sharp and, and ready to respond to a number of different pathologies um, quickly, be able right. to think on the spot and make a decision as to whether or not that patient needs to have surgery, uh, that patient needs to be transferred to a higher level of acuity, or, um, you know, if there's nothing to be done. Right. So, and uh, when you consider that, 
there, there's so many different things that could happen. I mean, just think of how complex the brain and the spinal cord, uh, the anatomy is. Um, you know, people can get shot, people can have strokes, people can have tumors, people can have various types of fractures. Uh, they can have uh, all kinds of stuff. It, it forces you, taking call forces you to read up on things, to keep up with the literature and uh, always stay relevant. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to take care of all these uh, problems. Right, right. Um, I guess one thing for most neurosurgeons out there, what's the split between brain, like cranial surgery or brain surgery and spinal surgery? So it really depends on the type of practice. I would say that if you're a uh, surgeon working at a private demic place, like where I work, uh, I think the mix is about 80% spine and 20% cranial. Um, but there are institutions, uh, highly reputable institutions where there are senior attendings who are subspecialized, trained in one very specific area who uh, then only will see certain types of pathologies. So there are places where the attendings are, for example, doing 100% cranial procedures or the split is 90-10 uh, you know, cranial spine, but also keep in mind that overall, there aren't that many cranial cases relative to other conditions. Mm -hmm. So even those attendings that are at centers of uh, excellence or quaternary centers of uh, referrals, um, they're not doing high volume cranial cases. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have very rewarding practices. It just means that, you know, they're, they're primarily dealing with 100 or 120 complex cranial cases. Now, keep in mind, a lot of those complex cranial cases not only take a lot of uh, studying and workup and planning um, to get to the operating room, but then also they're extensively complex and uh, both physically and mentally taxing. So some of these operations can be 12, 14 hours long. So you could see how if, if, if you're at that level, um, doing 150 of those cases in a year is a, is a, is a monumental task. Uh, sure. And then, and then there, there are certain neurosurgeons who, uh, you know, pick and choose. There are surgeons that don't want to necessarily do certain things. So there are certain neurosurgeons that would gravitate toward a niche. They're more interested in taking care of spine patients, but even within that spine universe, they, for example, would prefer to take care of cervical pathology more so than lumbar pathology. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, that's the beauty of this field is that the really opportunities to uh, tailor a practice towards whatever your desires are. Um, but then, you know, there's always some geographical, um, you know, sort of constraints. You know, I mean, there, there are certain places that are major metropolises. So, uh, you know, trauma tends to be, tends to be the, 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 the breadwinner, you know, like, for example, if you're a neurosurgeon practicing in Baltimore, you're going to see a lot of trauma cases. If you're a neurosurgeon somewhere, um, that's not as, 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 as a big of a metropolis, you might see more degenerative spine. So, uh, you know, really, uh, it, it, the, the, the practices out there could be, uh, you know, pretty variable. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a, a point thing to point out with the subspecialization, I think, you know, as you know, at, at Emory here, it's, um, you know, big academic place. Um, and I can attest to what you're saying, you know, the, there's, you know, the, there's one very prominent neurosurgeon here who only does cerebrovascular, as you, as you know, and he does mainly aneurys aneurysm cases. There's another one who does mainly skull base. He does a, like runs the pituitary center here. Um, there's others, like you said, that only do pretty much exclusively spine work. Maybe they cover some cranial things on call. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's also what's so fascinating about neurosurgery is it's, you know, you guys do so many different types of cases and different types of operations um, that you can really focus in on one area or, or certain areas, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, I guess, what are you, for you, what are the most common types of procedures you perform? And I guess, which are, which ones are your favorites to do? Um, you know, again, it really depends on the, on the season here in Toledo. Uh, <laughs> if it's, if it's uh, trauma season, uh, summer months uh, with all the kids, on their uh, bikes strolling around, um, I would potentially do more uh, trauma cases, right? And, uh, you know, I'd say in those uh, busy trauma seasons, it could be a 50-50 mix where I'm taking care of a lot of cranial trauma. These are skull fractures, uh, intracerebral hemorrhages uh, and so forth, but then also have a fair number of uh, uh, traumatic spine fractures. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but, you know, I, I tend to do a fair number of cranial cases and it's mainly not, not so much my, my training and my, uh, my, my fellowship background, but it's more um, that after, you know, being in a practice and doing certain cases, you sort of develop a reputation. And so the cases get naturally uh, referred to you. Sure, right? sure. So even if I'm not on call, for example, I may get one or two cranial cases referred to me. Uh, so, you know, there's always a healthy mix of trauma. There's always a healthy mix of cranial cases, but I would say uh, I, I, I certainly do more spine cases than I do cranial cases. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as far as what tickles my fancy more and what makes me uh, more excited, certainly the cranial cases, you know, the complex aneurysms, the complex skull base cases are uh, much more exciting. I mean, there's a, there's a certain adrenaline rush that comes with, you know, doing a, a big acoustic neuroma where you have to preserve so many of the cranial nerve functions and, and you're working such a tight, eloquent space, mm -hmm. not saying that spine surgery is not eloquent. I think all of nerve surgery is, I think, you know, all the specialties really, you have to be really good because you're taking care of an individual and what we do could significantly impact someone's quality of life. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, cranial cases are definitely special. Uh, no questions asked. Um, you know, in fact, I think I've got a, my dog is saying hi. Um, <laughs> I got a case uh, on the 30th that, uh, you know, I'm reading up on and preparing for. And, and, uh, and so that's, that's certainly going to be exciting. That's awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, in the spine world, you know, spine fractures tend to be uh, uh, rewarding cases. You know, these are typically cases in younger individuals that, you know, suffer a car accident or, or a motorcycle accident who are perfectly normal, um, highly functioning, independent before, suffer a traumatic fracture. And then you have the capacity as a neurosurgeon or as a spine surgeon to put them back together and then send them out back, you know, send them back out to life. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like putting together a jigsaw puzzle, right? So you, right. you put their spine back together and then you see them back in six weeks and you see that the person is uh, recovered and, and doing well. So uh, really, I think as a whole, the entire specialty is, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, really rewarding. Um, but if you ask me, what is the one case, what's the last case that I want to do as I sail into the sunset, it would probably be, uh, you know, either a complex tumor case or a, uh, or an aneurysm case. 